The technocratic elite consistently create new methods and schemes to control the masses. And one of those strategies is the bail-in. So today we will discuss what a bail-in is, and I'll use easy explanations and diagrams. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I'm going to move into the diagrams first, so we'll get into these, and this is just a little cartoon type illustration, and these type of diagrams are from my book, so let's go into this here. You take your money that you made from your job, let's say, and you deposit it into the bank, and you assume at this point that your money is safe and is in good hands in the bank, and any time you want to take your money out, that you can do so but of course that's not the case because they steal your money and we know this because they use fractional reserve banking the reserve ratio how much they actually have to keep in the bank can sometimes be as low as three percent and this is obviously going to show you that if everyone wanted to pull out their money they simply wouldn't have it so what are they doing with that money in fact they're gambling and this is very very real because we see that sometimes when they gamble they take losses so we're gonna move on to the next diagram here that shows you just that occasionally they're left with only a little bit in their vaults and what happens is that they call an emergency they begin yelling and screaming to the government please save us please help us because your citizens are going to be in trouble so you have to help us out now the one strategy that they have been implementing globally now and i'll get into that in a moment is called the bail-in and i'm illustrating that with this pie chart and essentially they take a piece of the pie for themselves and where does it go well the diagram shows you it's going back into the bank but of course it's not going back into your account it is going back into their gambling schemes so that they can repeat the cycle yet again it's a way for them to confiscate wealth from the individuals so and where does that leave you in poverty and that is simply what I wanted to show with these diagrams here this is a very very realistic look using cartoons to actually depict how this works so let's break this down show you real-life examples of how this is going on today the obvious one is Cyprus. For those of you who don't know, the Bank of Cyprus executes a depositor bail-in. This is out of the Telegraph. Savers in the Bank of Cyprus took a hit on Sunday as 37.5% of their uninsured deposits were converted to equity. And they were yelling and screaming on the streets, but of course that did nothing so what exactly happened here well the banks ran into some trouble now regardless of what that is that trouble they essentially felt that we would steal money from the individuals in their uninsured deposits and they're just going to put that back into their banks for recapitalization now this is one real example that took place in this just recently in 2013 in fact and here we are having to understand the fact that this is being implemented globally but if you talk about it they suggest that this isn't real this isn't going to happen don't worry about it we're much stronger than cyprus but Hang on for a moment as we go through these articles here. Under the new so-called, quote, quote, bail-in rules, globally systemic banks will have to hold total loss absorbing capacity, equity, or debt that can be converted into shares of at least 16 to 20% of their assets weighted for risk. So this is what they're saying. They have globally systemic banks. They have big banks, what they call too big to fail. But with the bailouts, that was very unpopular. Of course, having to bail out the banks using trillions upon trillions of dollars to bail out these banks, banks that is simply not popular, not good for the politicians. So they'll use another scheme called a bail-in. Now, when 
Canada had this bail-in regime, as they call it, and they actually put it in their action plan 2013, which I'll discuss later on here. They actually said later on that this is not going to happen. It's going to be not the taxpayers. They're not going to get involved. Those people, their bank accounts, not going to get involved. This is just special funds that we set up that is just money sitting there for a rainy day. And we'll use that to have to bail out the banks. But the question I have is, if you had these rainy day funds, why did you have to use the bailout scheme only a few years back in the financial crisis? Where exactly was that money at that time? Why did you have to steal trillions of dollars from the taxpayers around the world in order to bail out the system? Well, the fact is that that money is not there. They gamble it over and over again. And how many times are we going to be swindled by their lies, by the propaganda? Well, for I, for one, am not going to be swindled any longer. Let's look at this article out of the RT. New rules are being proposed that will force creditors, not taxpayers, remember that, to carry the losses of banks deemed too big to fail. The plans came after Western taxpayers were asked to pay trillions of dollars to bail out the banks in the 2008 financial crisis. It's practically exactly what I said, uh, showing you on the previous tab. So I'll move on. The new global rules will force creditors to bear bank losses, ensuring that taxpayers' money should never be used to bail out banks. This is a complete joke because look at what happened in Cyprus and watch, they're not the only ones and look how this is being implemented globally. I'm going to move on. So much to cover. Right here. Brisbane G20 Summit back in 2014, they all gathered together and all implemented the bail-in rules. They said, look, we all have to steal money from the people. It can't be just one country. Let's all do it. Let's all make this part of our new system of theft, ending too big to fail. The bail-in tool is a key component of the set of resolution powers that national authorities should have in place to deal with failing financial institutions. You could read the details for yourself. However, when you look into it, it essentially always says the same thing. I'll read you all these tabs in here coming up. They're all going to say the same thing. I'll move on quickly through them. But essentially, we don't want too big to fail. We don't want the bailouts. We don't want taxpayers affected. So we're going to implement something called a bail-in, which is going to be basically the saving grace for anything that should happen. We're going to use the creditors. They're not going to have to use the depositors. That's what they continue to say. I'm not believing it for a second. And I'll show you right here one example. Dutch Bundesbank. One-off wealth levy assessing the pros and cons and the importance of credibility. So, once again, you can go into this paper for yourself. But they call it a levy. They called it a tax. They called it a bail-in. You can use a hundred different names, but when somebody takes money from another individual's account, whether that's a government, whether that's a bank, whether that's some sort of bank robber, whoever you want to call it, whatever you want to say, use different terms, terminology, translate it into 10 different languages, a hundred different languages. It doesn't matter. It's called stealing. It's it's called theft and that is the way I look at it I always break it down to the most simplest terms call it a levy Dutch Bundesbank call it a levy that's fine it's theft let's move on right here just more supporting uh, evidence for this out of market watch Germany okay's plan to make creditors prop up the banks and of course, you know, they'd say that essentially they were the first to do this. The new bail-in rules are part of a package of German legislation on the European Banking Union, an ambitious project to centralize bank supervision in the euro zone and when banks fail to organize the rescue or winding up at a European level. Once again, they're going to use the bail-in that is now a global policy. This is Germany, one of the strongest countries in the world, but of course, they're facing all of the same exact dangers. 
Look at this. In the UK, the strategy developed on the basis of powers provided by the UK Banking Act of 2009. So this goes far back, but right here. Such a strategy would involve the bail-in, brackets, write-down or conversion, of creditors at the top of the group in order to restore the whole group to solvency. This is right from the FDIC.gov. They're talking about this information about the UK implementing the bail-in regime, whatever you want to call it. Again, this is obviously and clearly a global policy. What about this? The Action Plan 2013 from Canada, they said the banks are strong. We will not have an issue. But what happened only a few years ago during the financial crisis when Bloomberg got the information that said that Canadian banks received bailouts from the Federal Reserve. How do you explain that? I thought they said that the that Canadian banks never received a bailout. Oops, the information was leaked. Look at this. The government proposes to implement the, quote, bail-in regime for systematically, systemically important banks. This regime will be designed to ensure that in the, of course, unlikely event that a systematically, systemically important bank depletes its capital, the bank can be recapitalized and returned to viability through the very rapid conversion of certain banks' liabilities to regulatory capital. Once again, call it what you want, it's called theft. They say that they, in fact, had these special funds set up. Don't worry, it's not the depositors that are going to be affected, it's these special funds that we have set up. Call it what you want, it's not true. Let's move on right here out of Bloomberg. Austria implemented the EU resolution rules with a law that made a bail-in option available this year ahead of the block-wide deadline. Only Germany and the UK did the same, and I was covering those a moment ago. So what they're talking about here is Austria having a bank failure. So I'll move on to the next article, which is connected into that. In a nutshell, the Austrian government has had enough of the funding, the bank losses, and announced plans to bail in external creditors to the tune of $7.6 billion instead. So right there, they have one very near example. It isn't just Cyprus. It is a bail-in being implemented in Austria in a limited environment, of course, but it will continue. This will spread. This will be the new bailouts. So your money that's in the banking system is at risk. This is why I tell every single person, you do not keep savings in the bank. Yes, we need money in the bank to pay off the bills that we have and we perhaps we work a nine to five job and the money gets deposited in there i totally understand you need this account well you do not need to keep savings in the banking system you do not have to do that you need to invest in real assets i cover this in other videos i cover this on the insiders as well so i won't cover that here but essentially i'll just tell you that your money in the banking system is at risk i'm consistently asked about the credit unions are they safer than the banks and i'm going to do a whole video on this but just to give you a little tidbit of information right now just to say that yes in a way they could be seen as being safer they do not have all the derivatives and all this other exposure on top of it but you are still banking with the same currency and the currency itself is flawed it's going to come down it's going to all collapse all the dominoes will fall and your money will be at risk still so that's all i'll say for this video right here now of course, if you found the video informative, please give me a thumbs up. This is part of a whole series of videos that I'm doing to educate the masses. I hope that you appreciate this. Now, the reason I'm doing these type of videos is, of course, you guys, you may know all of this information. You may have seen it. I've covered a bunch of this on the channel before, but many people aren't awake to this type of information. So what I'm doing is building a whole course for free for the people to learn from so you can say look you're trying to explain to your friend for example or your family member about bail-ins and why your money isn't safe in the bank well 
if you can convince them yourself, you could say, look, just watch this video. It has some cartoon diagrams that you can watch and it'll explain it for you. And that's it. And you leave it there. You send them the link and that's about it. And perhaps they'll watch the whole playlist and there will be perhaps 10 or 20 videos by that time. And suddenly they're starting to ask questions. Wait a minute, what's going on with this banking system? I don't really trust it. So then they start watching the other videos and then that connects them into other people's videos. And then perhaps they'll start reading some books about it. And then they can really get their finances in order, get their family prepared. But a lot of people aren't willing to uh, get into the deep intel right away. So these type of videos are extremely important and many people out there in the alternative news and definitely not in the education system at all are not going to get into it. So that leaves me to fill in the void. So I once again, hope that you appreciate this information. Please give me a thumbs up. It truly, truly helps me out a lot. Now, of course, if you want the latest and greatest intel you need to be an insider the insiders is where i give out all my best intel for free and that is available at the money gps.com you just scroll down to the bottom fill in your email address and you get occasional emails from me with good short concise info 